Have you ever wondered why an apple falls from a tree instead of floating away? If so, you've thought about one of Newton's laws without even realizing it. Picture it. The year is 1687, and Sir Isaac Newton publishes his three laws in his work, Principia Mathematica. These laws, intuitive yet revolutionary, forever transform our understanding of the physical world. From an object's motion to the invisible forces at play, Newton's laws hold the keys. Let's dive in and demystify these laws one by one. One by Newton's first law, also known as the law of inertia, seems pretty straightforward. In essence, it tells us that an object will keep doing whatever it's currently doing unless some force comes along to change that. It's like when you're cruising down the highway at a steady speed. Your car wants to keep moving forward at that same speed until something, say, your foot on the brake pedal or a gust of wind, applies a force to slow it down or speed it up. The same principle applies when an object is at rest. Picture a book on a table. It's not going anywhere unless something like a gust of wind or an inquisitive cat pushes it. This law of inertia is all around us, influencing everything from the smallest dust particle to the largest planets. So, remember, without an external force, an object will keep doing what it's doing. Moving on to Newton's second law, things get a little more mathematical. This law tells us that force is equal to mass times acceleration. In simpler terms, the force exerted on an object is directly proportional to the rate of change in its momentum. Let's think about pushing a boulder versus a tennis ball. Even if you apply the same force, the boulder moves less than the tennis ball, right? That's because the boulder has more mass. This is a key part of Newton's second law. The heavier the object, the more force you need to move it or change its direction. Similarly, if you push the boulder and the tennis ball with the same force, the boulder will accelerate less than the tennis ball. The acceleration of an object is inversely proportional to its mass, given a constant force. So, the heavier the object, the more force needed to change its motion. Simple, right? Finally, Newton's third law, often summarized as every action has an equal and opposite reaction. This law implies that any force exerted onto a body will create a force of equal magnitude, but in the opposite direction on the object that exerted the first force. Imagine you're jumping off a boat onto the shore. As you leap, your force pushes the boat backward in the water. That's your action. The boat's movement is the reaction. Another clear example is the recoil of a gun when fired. As the bullet is propelled forward with force, the gun is pushed back into the shooter's shoulder with an equal force. That's why shooters brace for impact when firing. This law is fundamental to our understanding of how forces work and it's in action all around us every single day. Remember, forces always come in pairs, action and reaction. So, there you have it. Newton's three laws of motion. We've journeyed through the law of inertia, where a body moves with constant velocity unless acted upon by a force. Then, we delved into the relationship between force, mass, and acceleration. The more the force, the greater the change in momentum. Finally, we uncovered the mystery of action-reaction pairs, with every force having an equal and opposite force. Next time you see an apple fall from a tree, you'll know there's more to it than meets the eye. Thanks to Newton, we can understand these phenomena a little better.